at one point in my life, I had so much debt that I was overwhelmed. I was overwhelmed by debt and I wanted to come out of debt. And so I told my wife that we needed to be very, very uh, serious about repaying the debts because the debts were killing me. Like I owed a lot to the banks, I owed a lot of, in credit cards. And I knew that we needed to come out of that. And, and that was a time we were raising children as well, young, very little children. And because of the issue of debts, it was compromising everything. Like we couldn't manage even the household. I had a job, thankfully. And my wife was a stay home mom raising the kids that we had. So at that point, even to meet the budgets to pay rent was a problem. But me and my wife decided we were living a very minimum life. All we needed is to have is just basic, the very basic um, things in life. And then we would repay the debt. And we started repaying one by one. But God gave me a brilliant idea and I consolidated my debts into, into one loan. And, and, and I was paying just this one thing. And time went on, time went on. We lived like that for a couple of years and we were just paying it and coming out of debt little by little, staying very, very minimal uh, lifestyle. And at that time I was doing, I was having my education as well. That's, I was edu educating myself. My dad could not pay for my education just because of the constraints, he couldn't afford it. So when, when I, I got an opportunity to, for a job, I educated myself. So I would, at that point, I, I would be paying the bills for the family. Not only pay the bills for the family, I would be paying the debts and I was paying for my education. So it was a very tough time, but God saw us through. Uh, I just wanted to, 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 to start from there and say, at some point, I finished the education. I was able to finish the education. And after such a long time, the debts as well, I was coming out of debt. In the same year that I, I graduated, it's the same year that I was going to zero debt. Folks, it was like, we were paying a lot into debt and living just minimum, just as, as, as long as we could feed, eat food, drink water and sleep under the roof, we were satisfied and that's how we lived. We were not buying new stuff, new clothes, and, but people did not understand. You know, people thought these guys are so quiet and you know, why do they keep to themselves? But we knew what we wanted to come out of debt. But when I graduated and finished repaying the debt, I became an advocate to, to educating people how to come out of debt. And it's like something happened. Just when that happened, my employer who was had employed me for a very long time, suddenly, and I was one of the favorite persons in that organization, from nowhere, he turned against me. He woke up one day, gave me a termination letter and told me to just leave, quit the company. And I quit, went home, and I did not understand, sent him a text message, what happened? He said, no, 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 you, you can't show up here, you're gone. So I waited, there is some money, some money you should get when you get um, fired, you should get some uh, end of term benefits. He blatantly told me that I was not gonna pay you. And if you wanted me to release you to go to the next job, because that's how the system worked, where I was living. If you wanted me to release you to go to the next job, just leave. I, you, you can't take your end of service benefits. And I did not understand where this came from. I was confused. And as a believer, I just went to God and said, I, God, you know what has happened. Uh, I don't know, know where this came from, but suddenly, just when I finished my education, I finished paying my debts, and I thought, oh, now I could start building our life on a positive suddenly I have no job and we were confused but me and my wife you know like as 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 you know Christians what we did is I told my wife we need to go on a fasting for three days just to seek the direction of the Lord and why all these 
all this thing has happened so suddenly. So me and my wife went on a fast. And that time, I remember in the house, because we had, we had three children then. And we had a nanny, like those in the jurisdiction I was living in, we had a nanny in the house. So I had all these responsibilities. I had a nanny to help raise the children because three of them. And then I had just finished my education, which was very, very positive. But now I have no job. And I had just come out of debt. And I remember I had a little saved up. I had the, the few months coming up to my finishing the debt, like before I got fired, like three, four months, I had saved up something, a little bit of something that could, could, could take me a couple of you know weeks, weeks, if not a month. And then here is my employer who is holding me hostage right now. He, he, does, he doesn't want to you know, pay me my end of service benefit so I can, I can have something to go on as I look for another job. He's holding me hostage. So I was just at home, not knowing what to do. And he still had not canceled my visa. We ha I had a work visa, so I could not go into the next job. He's holding me hostage and keeping me in limbo. So after fasting, we felt strongly led to go to the authorities. So we went and started a labor case because for unlawful dismissal. But that meant that we had to go fight that case for so long a time because my employer would not just release me and pay me my dues. He fired me, I was okay with that because I can't do anything when you fire me. But now he was holding me hostage and I started a case that I did not know how long it was gonna take. I had very, very little saved up because I just had just finished my debt and then I am home, started a case, and I was just staying home, and my nanny needed the pay to be paid every month. That's the point we came home, and I told my wife, oh my God, here I am. I have this nanny who also depends on me. Uh, and she had a family as well to take care, you know, her mother, sisters, brothers, and we were all living abroad in the Middle East and she came all she was living she was from Africa and she needed to send some money to Africa and now here we are with nothing so I just went uh, embarked and looking for a, for a job and I started applying and as I was applying I would go for interviews and I would do two to th two interviews of the three but I realized that my boss who fired me was a very, very uh, influential person because he knew a lot of, of CEOs. And just before I would get the employment, he would call in and ruin it. So I think he ruined like two or three chances. And you know, it's not easy to go through an interview, even to get one. So three of the interviews I did, I was in the last stage of being taken, but he would ruin it. He would somehow get to find out and he would ruin it. So it would just, end there and they would never call me back anyhow he ruined my chances and i felt like cornered because here is my boss he won't let me go he won't pay me and he won't even let me get the next job because he's known you he ruined my chances and it was very tough so i i used up the little savings that i had just within a month i paid rent i paid food and nothing was left I was zero and I still remember the last amount that was left in the bank account in the next month was equal to the salary of the nanny that I had so me and my wife decided not to fire her even though I did not have the resources we said we are waiting upon God to help us why should we the same faith we transfer to her. If we fire her, she'll be in the same situation that I am in. And it's almost like I, I, uh, we were not applying the same faith. So we said, if you're waiting upon God, she is part of us. She, she's going to stay. And I remember one day she went to meet her friends on a weekend. I, I we used to allow, you know, let her go on weekends. And her, she told her friends, my boss, me, has been fired. And he has not been working for a month now. 
and I think her friends influenced her to to come ask for her salary. She never asked before. I used to pay her, you know, like at will. When she came, she said, "I need my salary," and I was like, I was hoping she would understand and maybe just hold on because that was what what was left for our, our food to feed her and my family. But when she asked, I said. I'm a man of faith. I've been tell talking to her as well, telling her God is going to come through. If I say no, then my faith is zero. So I went to the bank and gave her the salary of the only amount of money that I had. But still, we decided not to fire her. So the next month, I did not know where she was, how I was going to pay her at all. But being the preacher I am, you know, like have a person of faith, I used to tell her, God will do it. God will do it. But I st we stood by the f our faith, me and my wife. And by the second month, I'm still going for interviews, as I said, but my boss is ruining my chances. Somehow, either they called him for reference or something, or he knew it. I don't know how he was got to know, but he would ruin my chances. Fast forward one year later, I got to know through those guys that they couldn't because he spoke directly to the board or CEO and ruined my chances. Anyway, so now second month going in, jobs not coming through and I'm in limbo and he's, now I have a case that I, I have to go attend to the labor. And he would not even show up. When labor department called him, he would not show show up because he knew that as time goes i would be crushed i would have no money and being in a foreign country i would either have to leave because i, I could not stay without money so he just he just kept me just hostage in that way anyway so now i remember going into the second month i barely survived into the third month we literally had no food in the house. I had no food to feed my family. And all my chances of a job were just um, not coming through for some reason. And my nanny was just there with me. And at some point, I needed to pay my three, rent was, was in three months. You have to pay three monthly, every three months. So I needed to pay my next payment for the next three months and I did not have money. And it not, not only, not only the rent, I had no money for food, folks. So what happened is we were just trusting God, doing what we need to do, applying for, you know, jobs and just waiting for God. And at that point, me and my wife were just holding on to God. Do you know holding on to God when nothing is coming? You have three little ch children you need to feed and nanny you need to feed and pay and rent that the landlord won't understand. And the chances, the only ch way out is to get a job. And that job, you're, you're qualified, you, you have all the credentials, but your former boss is ruining them. So I, I was literally cornered. And I'm not used to begging or asking people to help. I was going to church and people would see me praising, raising hands, and we would put oil on our faces of our children. And we were looking good. We would take photos and post them on Facebook. And people would say, looking good, great family. And they never knew behind the scenes. Behind the scenes, we were really in dire need. But God is amazing. So when we had no, it was Christmas. I remember it was Christmas time. And our kids were asking, oh, we usually used to buy them some, some gifts, little gifts for every Christmas. They were asking, what are we going to get for this Christmas? And I was looking at my children. They did not even know there, 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 there was no guarantee for the next meal. Yet they were asking for gifts. But something happened. We, we went, we used to go for for fellowship I think that was if every is it Friday morning yeah so we used to go very early in the morning and that time when I had no employment uh, we, me and my wife took the took the car and we were driving to go for a fellowship and the car boiled over uh, overheated 
and we just dumped it somewhere and somehow made our way to church <laughs> anyhow uh, all the trouble for all the trouble I do not know that Sunday the church was led to say if there is anyone here who have no em employment just be left behind we have little Christmas gift to give you and I was left behind and I realized there are a couple of us who, who do not who were left family that were left behind and guess what they give us like little packaged food for about two days uh, ration and that was amazing just the day when we literally were out of food and had no money they gave us food that would last us two three days and it was cooked so all we needed to do is put it in the car and put it in the in the, in the fridge and, and eat it and on top of that they gave us an equivalent of say about 15 is it 15 15 dollars 15 us dollars is what we got the equivalent in, in middle east middle eastern money it was about 15 us equivalent and i have never been been given money or things by anybody i've been just working myself out and working hard so that's the first thing i received out of charity and those guys it's just some guys in church it's a man who came up and said let's do something for people who have no Christmas maybe they're suffering they have no jobs and they give each and every family and people who came $15 and quite substantial uh, substantial amount of food and I, I I drove home with that food and me and my wife were just in awe we said just when we had no food and because of what they did and because of God coming through when I had nothing like like when I was just about to sit in the house drink water and go to, to sleep with my family and a nanny we had food for three days so my faith rose up and said God can provide you when you're in your wilderness my faith rose up and the $15 that they, 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 I was given, it felt like a million dollars. And I told my wife, this is a million dollars because I felt like my wallet was, was just bursting open. I felt like that was a lot of money because I had nothing and I had not been used to being given anything by anybody in my life. So this one was amazing for me. It felt like I told my wife this will never run dry. This feels like it's just a stream of, of, of a river of money that shall keep flowing. My rent for three months was equivalent to, I'll put it in dollars, was equivalent to $4,000. $4,000. And I, I did not know how to pay this amount. Now this is the, the story of how my rent was paid. I had two, no, I, I won't call them friends. Some guys from Asia learned they had worked in that company and had left on their own accord. But they kind of like understood the character of my boss or our boss. And when they realized that I, I had been fired and they knew I had a family, they were not friends, but they knew me somehow. They called me personally and told me, uh, Lawrence, I know you have a family and you don't have a job and you're not stable if you need anything do you need anything i said um my rent is going through and it's four thousand dollars they said don't worry he asked me for for my bank account then another friend from asia and i'll mention uh, let me keep their name secret because you know it's, it's social media another guy I, I won't call him friend friend like very close but he knew me an acquaintance he called me the same day, oh, I know you have a family. Two amazing people from Asia, from India, called me. And he asked me the same question. I know you have no food. Double miracle. The guy called me and asked me for my bank and he tra transferred some money. The two guys that were equal to my rent. Equal to my rent. And that's how I paid my three months rent. And out of that faith, 
one week later no no three days later my wife tells me do you remember you had a business some 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 business card someone gave you before just just take a look i went and found it and i called these guys and they said um where are you come now then immediately when i called them i went to that office and they told me oh my god okay so you have not been working i said yeah because there i have some issues i want to be upfront with you i have some issues with my former employer fired me for no reason I ha and, I, and I have a case going on and my visa is now in limbo I can't process they said don't worry we know about such cases just go write a proposal he asked me to propose go write a proposal of how you want to work with us and I went in disbelief and this is just after I was fed by the church and given $15 and I go home and say, I told my wife, I think this guy is not serious. He's asking me to write a, the proposal myself. And it took me two days thinking, what does he want me to do? Just in shock. And he called me, did you finish the proposal? That's when I said, I I I'm going to bring it tomorrow. And I wrote how I wanted to, me and him to relate. And when I went, he asked me, when are you starting? And one week later, after those two miracles God came through when I got it got a job and a month later I had a salary and I also remember a, a friend of mine from the United States somehow called me and asked me to um, ask me if I needed anything I narrated my story then he asked me that he was going to lend me four thousand dollars he lent me sent me four thousand dollars that later, after my few salary, I, when I got paid, I added up after a couple of months and paid him back. But God took me, God took me from no job, no food, no rent, to coming through with food, $15, paying my rent, and even getting money lent by a friend i had to repay my friends back even the guys who paid my rent because I, I, I could not you know take advantage i paid them back after i stabilized after a year they were very very patient with me and i stabilized myself and one of the reasons that motivated me mostly to come out and to leave the Middle East is because the system how the system is geared it's not labor friendly the case took about one year and a half and I won it I won in the court which is amazing that's God he tried to use he had lawyers he brought lawyers for me so that I could they could not pay me and mess it up I was alone in court but I won it anyway so God brought the victory as well after one year and a half and I was actually working illegally, but at least I fed my family. And this motivated me to leave the Middle East, and that's why currently I live in North America. So I just wanted to bring this testimony to encourage somebody. And I will almost apologize because, you know, like the days I used to be in the Middle East, you know, we used to post nice photos and people would think these guys are doing great. And I want to apologize because Facebook, social media is very, it's not a true place to get any information. You know what I mean? It's especially about people's life, uh, people's lives, because we lie. We post only the good side of things. No one posts the problems. And when you look at people, you think you're behind. You think God is not blessing you enough. You start asking, where are you? Where are you, God? Where are you? Everyone is, is in good shape, wearing good clothes, going to good places, going to restaurants I can't afford. What did I do to you? Social media, it's, it's, it's just one big lie. It's a facade. Don't believe the pictures you see and, and, and try to match up and trying to compare yourself. You're going to be depressed and think God is not for you. But the reason I'm putting this testimony is just to encourage someone who is going through the same and is thinking I'm behind, especially when you look at the posts people put in social media. Hold on to God. 
God can be able and he's able to feed you as he fed Elijah in the wilderness using a bird when he had nothing. He fed the Israelites in the wilderness for 40 years. Nothing grew there. They were not farming. So be encouraged. Trust in the Lord. Hold on to him. He will come through for you. I want to praise God for what he did for me. He gave me food when I had no food. He gave me water when I had no water. He paid my rent when I had nothing. He paid my debt as well. May his name be praised forever and ever. In Jesus Christ's name, amen.